What's going on YouTube? We're about to head down to Orlando to Carlos Tuning to um, the car clinic to a shop to finally get this thing dialed in. We're ready to rock and roll. Probably get some fart plugs. Uh, maybe a little special fuel. Shh, Shane doesn't know yet. And uh, yeah, it should be a pretty eventful day. All right, so we are right around the corner from Carlos's shop. Uh, we have in the back a bunch of VR1 nizzle. So we got a bunch of, <laughs> we got a bunch of oil because uh, I have some cheap oil right now just to flush out, you know, the new pistons that I put in yesterday um, or whatever you want to call it. We're going to put some good oil into it. We have some brand new NGK uh, 2668s that we're going to be putting in as well. We are pulling up to Carlos's shop right now and we'll start unloading the car. Both kits come out at the same time, but I'll have the big kit only hit like 25% of it. Is 25% the lowest you can go? I can go. Because um, you got to remember, Pablo don't plan on really putting slicks or anything on it, so. It's not like it's unattainable. Full send. All the drive. And then when you grab second, the first kit will come right back in again, the full whatever it is. And then the second big kit will randomly progress in it. So still, by top of second, it's going to be a 200 shot. I think we need two of these. Two of the big ones. Two of the big ones. Where's Tim? Shout out to the, to the sponsor. Oh yeah. I mean, not really, but yes. <laughs> Shout out to American Sport Motorsports. Real MVPs in Orlando. This one's to wake your stop. And this one's to gap him. La vaca can fly, but I'm a run. You're gonna have to keep running like that video. <laughs> <laughs> so we <laughs> we ended up having an extra solenoid, an extra fuel solenoid that we're not gonna be using, and we're gonna end up running two nitrous solenoids instead because Carlos had something lying around. What you got here, Carlos? Is it a whole lot of nothing. A little 450s, maybe? <laughs> Alright, so we're over here with Yost. We are going to another local shop to pick up some chips. Carlos is all out, but he has an order on the way. Um, so we don't have to wait until tomorrow. We're going to get some chips tonight. And after that, we should be getting two for the CRX so we can do two different maps. You guys are gonna see more about that later. And then after that, the nitrous kit is almost all buttoned up. Big thank you to Carlos, Shane, and of course, Yost as well. Uh, big thank you to Travis for hooking it up with that KS2 plate, bro. Nice. Two shot, I mean, you know what? Now you're gonna say, y'all see it on the dyno. So uh, yeah, we're gonna go pick up those chips and go from there. All right, so I'm gonna do some filming for Pablo, but we're going to hook up Carlos's ECU so that he can do all of his tune. It's all, got all the, what's it called? Demon? Demon board. Demon board and all that stuff so he can hook it up in tune. Um, disregard the cluster of wiring because that still has to get all cleaned up. We kind of just threw it together and make it work for now. So Carlos is going to start getting everything in order and we're going to make sure the nitrous works and then we're going to go from there. All right, so I picked up the chips that I need. Well, we're actually going to be using two chips for ours because we're going to do two, two different tunes. And then these, uh, we can just have some extra chips, worst case scenario, something happens. They're only 10 bucks a piece, so can't go wrong with that. We are pulling back up to the area where Carlos's shop is, and then we can finish up uh, tidying up the CRX, load it on the trailer, and head to the dyno. Looking for distributor stuff. All right, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. Yost is vlogging me. I'm not sure if I mentioned it before. Uh, the ECU was only running when there was no chip in it. So like a stock, no map. He's recording me. So uh, we didn't know really what it was. We we're getting RPM signal to the TAC, but we're not getting it to the ECU. We checked all the wiring, all the wiring is intact. The distributor is what we think the culprit is. So right now, since we don't have access to an OBDO distributor, especially so late at night, we are depending the connectors off of an OBD1 distributor, which is Shane's uh, doing over there. 
and we're gonna put that with OBDO connectors and see if we can make that work onto this car. If it does, then problem solved. If it doesn't, then fun chasing our tails, right? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the dyno that we we're gonna use that's all wheel drive is closed since it's so late at night. There is still a dyno open, but it's only a front wheel or real wheel drive, basically a not, a, not an all wheel drive dyno. So we had to pull the drive shaft. Uh, we're not gonna be dynoing all wheel drive, but it's okay. We'll still dial in the car, uh, nitrous front wheel drive. And since it's not a boost car, it's not going to ramp up a lot of load and really affect the tune And when it comes to that uh, aspect of it. So right now, we're just tidying up the shop real quick. I'm going to bring my truck back in, load up the car, and we're going to run over to the dyno, and we should be ready for some tuning. Getting her unloaded at Gringo Speed Dyno. You know what happened to my window? Y'all just wait. I don't know if I mentioned 100% earlier, but y'all just wait. Y'all just wait. Don't tag me. So we got it on the dyno. We're strapping it down. Uh, we're going to start doing all that good stuff. First tune it on the 93 that's in it at the moment and then go for the magic corn sauce. Or is it corn sauce? It's not corn sauce, is it? It's not corn sauce. No. I don't know. We went to the pump. They were out. So we went inside and got some, you know, little gallon things from the inside. It said Titan? So like we said earlier, unfortunately, we had to take the drive shaft off. It's still all wheel drive. The drive shaft is not on because like you can see, it's a two wheel drive dyno. It's all good. We'll, uh, you know, put the drive shaft on another time. But for the time being, to make sure that we can dyno and everything, it's just front wheel drive and we're still going to send the bop. Shot or something like that. Now we have the return off. 
was running it back into uh back into the jug 45 getting rid of the 93 we about to put some good fuel in it it made about 167 on the motor the the graph shows it starts to pick up and the manifold is just so small the intake manifold the b16 one that i have even though i ported it and everything the plenum just isn't big enough it's not flowing the air it needs to be flowing on motor so it made 167 on motor i could probably come back with a bigger intake manifold and make a lot more power that's not that's not a problem it's a nitrous car it's not an all motor 93 car it's on pump 93 at the moment not e not even e85 so uh then we did a 50 shot the small solenoid and it made 238 on the small shot we are getting rid of the 93 in the car right now. We're about to put the special fuel that we got in the back of the truck and actually try to tune it on that and see how that goes. Carlos, what we got here? Uh, Is that E85? Yo ya le dije Yo ya wondering this is the difference between pump gas and M5 big solenoid right under the dash right there is dead it's not sending uh, nitrous or anything so we're gonna at least use the big pill on the smaller solenoid and get a little bit more out of it and uh, then figure out a, another solenoid situation for the future but at least get it tuned on a little bit more power for the time being Dipstick too. Obviously, if you got this far in the video, you already saw all the dyno pools. We ended up making about 167 on the motor on 93, no nitrous or anything. Uh, then we switched over to M5 on the motor, no nitrous. We made like 180, 180 and change. I forget exactly, but it's about like a 20 horsepower difference, the 93 to, uh, to M5. So we picked up some power there. If you look at the dyno graph, you can really see that the, the line starts picking up and then mid-range, it just dies straight and then the RPM brings it to make a little bit more power. The B16 manifold that I have, although it's ported, it's limiting us a lot on power. I might do a sheet metal manifold in the future or something that can flow a little bit more because that's going to help us a ton. On the nitrous, it kind of corrects for it because you know, you're oxygenating the combustion chamber by adding nitrous and everything. On the small shot on 93, it made about 230 horsepower. On M5, on the same exact shot, it made about 240 with the same amount of uh, nitrous. 
we had done a couple of pools where we made, I think, 270, then 280, and then 289, if I'm not mistaken. But with that, we were using a larger solenoids pill and the smaller solenoid, which you can interchange them. But um, we don't want to do that so we can still have the fun of doing the 93. Uh, we were tr testing that out on the M5. So uh, the big solenoid that we were going to use ended up not working straight out of box. So we had to tune on the small solenoid for now. Uh, we dropped it down to 230, like I said. We're gonna keep it at that for the time being. I'll probably end up getting a different manifold and seeing what's going on with that big solenoid that's not working. And then we can go back in tune with uh, the big solenoid and make a little bit more power. Well, a lot more power, because we're just on the, the tiny shot right now. We were gonna sh spray a bunch of nitrous, which we can't because of the situation from yesterday. But it's not to worry. Uh, the few pools that I just posted in the clip before this was front wheel drive on the little 205 tires that I have. It's totally spinning everywhere. It's kind of far away, so you can't tell that the tires are spinning, but the car is barely going anywhere. And you can notice that that's why. It's just, it's spinning its tires off. They're blowing them off. On the next clip, I'm about to put the drive shaft back on, and then we can do a little launch all-wheel drive. It's still the OEM CRV differential and a shortened drive shaft, so it still uses the clutches, engagements in the back. It's not a welded rear differential like my other diff is, because I wanted to do the OEM first, and then switch over to the welded one, and then switch over to the pinned one, so I can show you guys kind of the step-by-step -step difference of what they actually do individually. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna put that clip right there. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate all the support from everybody. Big shout out to all the companies who helped me with this build. Carlos Tuning, um, Shane, Yos, Brandon, Angel, everybody for helping out yesterday. We really appreciate it. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll see you in the next video, guys. And make sure to uh, you know stay tuned for more.